Vet TV is looking for the head writer of the company. What does that mean? We already have recruiters that have put out the job description and stuff and are searching for people online. But I think it's important for it to come to me because this is essentially replacing me. This is replacing the role that I spend the most time in in this company. And I, I, I have no doubt that, that this role can be fulfilled by an incredibly talented uh, human being. But, um, but I'm also certain that it will be a challenge to find someone who is up to this because this is, uh, it's not just a demanding job, but it is, um, it is, the job is so important, not just to the company or to the creation of every individual script that the head writer is guiding, managing, massaging, producing, and not just that, but I mean, those scripts ultimately get seen by the military community. And it is our job as the creators of uh, here at Veteran Television, all of our, our writers and directors and actors and producers, uh, it's our job to make things that this community not only really wants to see, that they're gonna laugh really fucking hard at, right? But also, it's our job to be a good influence on the community. And that role has to be taken seriously. And it's a crazy balancing act because like everything that we love making comedy out of is tragedy. We love to laugh at that which is wrong and terrible. And it's a game of one-upping between guys and girls, of one-upping who can say the more wrong thing and still get a laugh from everyone. Or, or, or just each other, right? That same ju- way that, that we existed when we were active duty in the military, for many of us, uh, of, of trying to say the most wrong thing to get a laugh out of our buddies. We do the same thing in scripts. <laughs> and we bring it to the screen. And so we're, we're making comedy out of wicked tragedy, out of stuff that people think is sacred, right? The military experience, sacred. Can't joke about that. Uh, yes, you can. Absolutely can. We do it all day, every motherfucking day. You know why? Because to us, to those in the profession of comedy, generally nothing's sacred. Right? When when a member of our family dies, someone that we love so so much, we're gonna joke about it at some point because that's how we cope. So. Is there a line? Ugh, that's a toughie. Uh, so here we, here we are making jokes about all of these terrible, atrocious things, but at the same time, we want to have a good message, you know, like, don't be a fucking asshole. Stop raping women. Stop treating them like shit. Um, don't be a pussy. Don't be weak, but also express your feelings. You know, like, uh, there's a lot of fucking stuff that needs to be balanced here. And it's definitely a challenge. And the person who takes this job needs to be good at, for one, always towing the line, but they also need to be good at guiding conversations. Not they also. This is, the, the job is guiding conversations. right? Because you, the head writer, you are not writing all the scripts. You're just guiding the writing of the scripts. You're managing the writers. Right now we've got seven projects that are being written at once. And every project has a head, has a secondary, and has a tertiary. And every project also has consultants, advisors, people who have lived in that world. So our writers haven't lived in every world that we're writing on. Most have not lived in the world. But what they do is they talk to the audience. They talk to the people that we're writing this for. And we say, hey, tell us about your world. What's funny? What's intriguing? What sucks? What makes you angry? What makes you sad? What stresses you out all day, every day? What is your day like? We ask those questions to the people who lived in the world. And so the head writer is essentially managing them too. You you not only need to manage all of the seven uh, people who are in charge of seven different projects, but then you're also managing all of the advisors and consultants that we bring in onto the projects. 
And then you're also managing all of the new people who want to write for Vet TV, which is a lot. And uh, they're not all good. Um, so you're, you're, you're developing two different kinds of writers as well. You're developing professional screenwriters. People have been doing the job for many years. And you're teaching them, these people, how to write for Vet TV, how to write to this audience, how to write with the Vet TV voice. Right? Because what a professional screenwriter likes to do is they, they get given a you know idea as a prompt to treatment, and they're so their brains are so brilliant, they work so fast, they'll just go and, and they'll write this you know amazing scene. And then one of us will read it who's lived in that world, and we'll be like, that doesn't happen like that. That's not how he would talk to him. And then now that professional screenwriter who's amazing is like, ah, oh, fuck, okay, well, now I gotta go back and talk to the people who've lived in that world. So it's, it's like half documentary, half fiction, right? You can, you can create fictional situations, but they have, to, um, they have to exist within the rules of that world, of that MOS. And then, and then there's also the tone of the show that you have to manage. Some shows have a more serious tone than others. And you have to control that tone. And you're doing all of this by having conversations with all of the writers and all of the advisors. The advisors are essentially the audience. Right? Everything that we do begins with the audience in mind. We don't put a, a fucking word to the page until we have gone to the audience and tried to figure out what they want to see. So, uh, let's just lay down some, some initial requirements. First and foremost, uh, whoever is the head writer for veteran television has to be madly, passionately in love with the United States of fucking America. They must believe that this is unequivocally the greatest country in the world, and they need to be artic they need to be able to articulate why this is the greatest country in the world. And amongst those reasons, needs to be because this country affords people the opportunity to pursue their dreams and to create the life that they want to live, provided that they are willing to work for it. And that belief must exist within the head writer because that belief must get channeled into our scripts at some one way or another, not every script, but that belief must exist within what this company produces. And so if that belief doesn't exist within the head writer, well then it can't come out of you naturally. Then it's fake, all right? What we writers do professionally, and to, to all the writers thinking about this job, you know this, so forgive me. For everyone else, a writer expresses that which lives within them for the world to see with the hope that it can connect them to the audience and the audience together. That's what we do at, our, at the core of writing. So the writer must believe in this country and believe in... Uh, in the American dream and believe that you must work your fucking ass off to achieve that dream and then all your dreams are possible. They must believe that because we're in the profession of filmmaking. We're in the profession of literally making dreams come true, of closing our eyes and envisioning what we want to see on the screen and then in this business, because we're really fast, eight months later, bah, that thing that was once a dream in here now exists on the screen forever for millions of people to see. That's the business that we are in, and therefore, you must believe and appreciate that America is the best place to capitalize, to take advantage of these opportunities, of the opportunity to bring dream to screen. Um, so that's one. Two, requirement. They must be madly, passionately in love with the military community. They must be deeply tied to it, connected to this community at their core and their soul. They they love it so much because they are a part of it and they want the best for it. That is a requirement for this job. You must love everything that this community has to offer. You must love all of the branches, all of the MOSs, even if you would never want to do that job in a million fucking years. You must have an immense appreciation for that job and for the people who have done that job. 
that appreciation has to be there because one day you're going to guide the creation of a television show about that job. And it might be a fucking water dog. An army water dog. That's, that was in the army now. Too easy. Um, I mean, we already did it with the shop. Administration. Right? I mean, that's got to be one of the most thankless fucking jobs. Right? Because it's never good enough for your bosses and it's definitely never good enough for the clients or other military service members who come in. Right? What a... What a thankless and potentially boring job and we made a show about it called The Shop and to those who've lived in that world they're just like yeah they're texting their friends oh my god they made a show about us bro check it out it's on Vet TV and they're so fucking excited to share with their friends this show that was made about their experience they feel like a million fucking dollars that somebody made a television show about their experience as an administration clerk. And in their eyes, they're like, yeah, nobody in a million fucking years would have ever thought that there was anything cool enough within this MOS to make a television show about it. But that TV did. And that's why we have diehard fans. It's because we're able to give the audience these things that no one else in the world will give them. So you, as the head writer, must be madly in love with all the things in this military from the lowest guy or girl in the shittiest fucking job what could, what job can we pick how about the uh, the marine lagos guys they have like the red dots it's like they have a red dot here i think red dots here i think on their cargo pockets right so they look stupid everywhere they go they got these big red patches on them it's not a dot it's a patch and uh, so they got the red patches. They get made fun of everywhere they go. And this is the worst part about it. Is these fucking guys and girls, their job is to bring the logistics to the grunts on the front line. Right? The reason that they got the red patches was because back when we were storming beaches in World War II... All the Marines land on the beach and they're getting chewed the fuck up by machine guns. So they're dying all over the place, the fog of war. People are getting lost from their fire teams and shit. So fire team leaders, squad leaders, platoon commanders and sergeants, they're seeing Marines and they're grabbing them saying, let's go this way. They're shoving people front forward. Right? Well, they started shoving all of these fucking logistics guys and back then it was just guys. These logistics guys forward because they didn't know any better. They just see Marines and we need Marines in the fight. Let's go. And then they bring them forward into the fight. And then now, there's no one behind them to bring the logistics. So now they, the Marines, or the grunts are, are pushing forward. They're fighting. Well, grunts and the Lago guys, the Red Patchers. And now they don't have anyone to bring them the logistics. Their beans, bullets, band-aids. So, the Marine Corps, in their infinite wisdom, gave them these red patches here. Hopefully through the editing we can add it on here. Put these red fucking patches on them. So that as we're storming beaches in the middle of the a fire, a, a battle in the fog of war, they know not to grab those guys and, and bring them forward. So their job is to keep the grunts alive and fighting on the front lines. And then the grunts are constantly fucking ripping on them, calling them fucking AIDS, AIDS carriers, because they got the red patches on them. You know, there's all kinds of nicknames that they get every, everywhere they go. They're getting made fun of. And I talked to one guy who was telling me about this experience. And he was telling me the funniest fucking shit. It, I mean, it was just a brilliant comedy that this guy's pitching to me. And this is an MOS that not only does no one really give a fuck about, uh, well, until they need the shit, uh, but they're being made fun of. Now, imagine if we made a show for them. How amazing that entire MOS would feel. And the show would be made in a way that everyone could laugh. But it's made specifically for them to make them feel like a million fucking bucks. And it's a special opportunity that we have to give a special gift to the people who've served in the U.S. military. That is why you must be so in love with this experience and be fascinated by every part of the military experience. Some special operators doing the most insanely badass shit to the Red Patras. Bringing, carrying food and batteries and shit off a ship onto land. 
So that love is a requirement, a love of this nation and a love of the military and of all of the things that exist within the military to include the veteran community. And you must love being surrounded by them, being immersed in this community. So that means a said writer has to go to events. They must be in contact with people who are in the military and out of the military. If you have been completely disconnected from the United States military, whether it's veteran or active, for years, even if you're this amazing, brilliant screenwriter and you've been a showrunner in big rooms, that's going to be tough because this job requires a love for the community and you can't tell me that you love this community so much. And then I look at your resume and you haven't done shit for this fucking community in years. So, it's possible. You could sell me on you, uh, but that's a tough sell. If your actions show that you haven't actually cared about this community in a very long time. So, you must care and you must love the community. Next, you must be really, really good at managing groups of people. And that's selling the position short. You must be incredible at managing groups of people. And further, you must be incredible at bringing the best out of people in groups. Right? So you're, you're, on a call, you're on a writer's call. Let's say you've got 10 writers on this call or in this meeting in person when we get back to meeting. This thing will live forever online, but this is Corona 2020 time frame. So we're all, it's all conference calls now. So you got to lead these meetings with 10 creative people who all have their own visions, styles, voices, and agendas. And you need to manage them to focus their attention onto one project and to tell them all of the things that they need to know to... Uh, to give this one project all that they have, all of the brain power, knowledge and experience of this community, knowledge and experience of good screenwriting and storytelling and comedy. They have to channel all of that into this one half hour to hour to two hour long meeting for this project about this other MOS. That's not theirs. It's not their project. It's not their MOS. But they're on this call to make it better. And you have to bring the best out of everyone. That's a fucking challenge. Not only do you need everyone to be there fully engaged and caffeinated and excited, but you need them laughing and feeling comfortable. So there needs to be a positive energy that exists amongst all of these writers and creators. There needs to be love and respect that exists amongst everyone. If you've got any bad apples in there, any people who approach that room and that environment with anything less than love and respect, it's going to hurt the energy. And then now you're going to get lower quality feedback from people. And that means that that script did not improve as much as it could have within that time frame. And uh, that's a fail. Because you have a limited amount of time to put forth towards all of these projects. It's not like regular show running where you, know, you got one show. And all you have to do is just live in this show's world all day, every day. And then managing these writers to just focus on this show. No. That's what the head writer of every individual show does. You as the head writer are managing all of these writers who are our full-time staff writers, our um, consultants, our, our paid professional screenwriting consultants who sit in on a lot of our calls. And then additionally, all of the new people who want to write for Vet TV. Uh, who are funny and have military experience, but don't know how to write, uh, don't know how to uh, write screenplays. So you got to develop them. You got to manage all of these people. You got to focus them onto this one project to give this project, that head writer, that writing team, the best that they have, and then you got to move on to the next project as the head writer and do, and do the same thing every day for all of our different projects. It's a hard job, and it just um, I mean, I won't say it just, it requires many things, but the ability to bring the best out of people is one of them. So one of the questions that I'll ask you is, how do you bring the best out of people? 
It's going to be a goodie. Uh, so, uh, who 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 sits on these calls? Let me go back to that. It's people who've been professionally screenwriting for years who don't know the vet TV voice, and then people who have the vet TV voice. They have the military sense of humor. They know how to entertain this audience because they're funny people. They have lived in this uh, in the military experience, but they don't know how to write screenplays. So now you're teaching people screenwriting. Excuse me. You're teaching people screenwriting, and then you're teaching people the vet TV voice. And you're doing it at the same time on the same call, sometimes. Um, but you know, you'll, you're gonna, you're gonna have the group calls with everyone on it where you gotta manage it. Then you're gonna have the group calls uh, with just professional screenwriters and the group calls with just your, your um, aspiring screenwriters, teaching them screenwriting. You're gonna need to give them projects all over the place. These people are writing sketches Maybe you've got a professional screenwriter, the guy's been writing for 20 years. And then you gotta tell him uh, after you read some of his work and you're like, this isn't our, our style. Start with a sketch. Watch all of our stuff and start with a sketch. And now that guy's ego might be like, sketch, oh, I write shows. It's like, okay, well, I mean, you can't write a show for us now because you don't know how. You don't know how to entertain this audience. You don't know how to write half documentary, half fiction comedy. So. We're gonna start you on a sketch. Having that conversation in a nice, respectful way um, with very talented professional screenwriters is part of what you'll be doing. It's all people skills, really. And it all comes down to just being a really fucking good, uh, respectful, nice person. And you have to be funny. You cannot be the head writer of a network that produces solely comedies and not be funny. So a great sense of humor not just in, in the screenplay, but in environments with others is another necessity, right? So let me go back to project management, right? That part of the job. Well, you're managing at least seven different projects. Well, seven different scripts that are going to be produced by the company. But then you might also be managing the projects of, uh, that are just the sketches that your new writers are writing. So now you're reading these sketches and you're providing notes on those and you have a meeting to develop this writer. And then two hours later, you got a meeting to develop another writer on a different sketch. And then you read all everyone's sketches and you know, five separate hour long meetings. And then you see the commonalities and mistakes and things that these new writers are doing. And then you get all of them on a group call. It's constant work, massaging and managing your talent. And, um, and then you're also constantly talking to marketing, learning what they know about the audience. And then you as the head writer, you need to be constantly talking to our audience. And you become a face. There's no way around it. You need to engage the audience. I do not want to hire someone who is a brilliant professional screenwriter that can learn the vet TV voice but isn't willing to get here on the camera and talk to this audience on a Facebook Live or an Instagram Live or on a Zoom call or in person. That's not gonna work. You have to do all the things. And engaging the audience, you, you, what you need to do as the head writer of Vet TV is you need to let the audience know who you are and what your intention is for them so that they are very clear about what you are doing and why, and once they understand that, they will open up to you and give you more. And the more the audience gives you, the head writer, the more you, the head writer, can give all of the writers beneath you. Beside you? I guess technically they're beneath if you're the head writer. I'm just trying to be nice here. Uh, but all of the writers that you work with, right? And everything comes from the audience. So you, the head writer, must have a great relationship with the audience because it all flows down from there. From you to our writers, into the scripts, onto the screen, back to the audience. Um, so that element of uh, public speaking, group management, crowd management, um, you need to have very good ability to express yourself both in, in person, on the camera, in groups. 
Um, that's incredibly important. And um, uh, what else? Be a head writer or veteran television. Um, oh, so you're managing all of these projects and you're managing deadlines. That's the thing, all right? So what's, what's the, the, the standard in the entertainment industry? You got a, you're a showrunner. You got maybe six people on your writing team for your show. And then this writer um, keeps showing up late. And then he starts, uh, he submits his work late. It's always like the next day. And it's, it's decent work, but everyone's submitting decent work. It's just that his is always late. Well, how does it go? You fire him. That's the way it goes in, in, in the, the greater screenwriting world. I guess I would say tell, world of television. In Met TV, it don't work like that. At least not with our, our staff writers. Because they're staff. They're paid a salary. Firing them, it, it, it's not that, it doesn't go like that. You have to come up with a better way to lead them and to manage them. To get the best out of them. To get them to turn in brilliant, fucking amazing things on time. Now, fortunately, our writers pretty much do. But there are some instances when maybe not. The deadline, they're like, oh no, I need to push to the right, push to the right, push to the right. And then you need to come in and handle that situation. How do you handle that? Because you can't just let them go. Now, if it keeps happening, sure, but there's, there's a different and, and perhaps better way to manage staff writers than that. And it might mean that there's something going on in their life. Maybe they get, they've got a creative block. And you just gotta dig in and ask the questions and get to the source of the problem and then help solve it. Um, to date, we don't have any jackasses. Never have, as writers. So they're all uh, in insanely talented and well-disciplined people. But in the future, you might get someone who's not. And you must manage that. Um, so you're also working with marketing, ensuring that the way the treatment is being packaged and the show is being packaged works with what marketing needs. Then you're also having conversations with uh, marketing because sometimes they're going to need commercials. They're going to need commercials, trailers. Trailers is what be your responsibility. But marketing copy, uh, email blasts, uh, and blog posts, which we want to get into. Right? The head writer, at least the next person to take this job would be managing that stuff too. Like marketing wants a brilliant commercial. They're going to come to you as the head writer and say, hey, we really need a commercial for Memorial Day. And uh, we'd love to get the writers together to brainstorm some ideas and help develop this. And now you got to look at all the writers and their time. All your writers are also, our full-time writers are also directors and actors. So they're engaged in all kinds of shit. So you're managing lots of time. And they're also technically producers too. So now you gotta look at all of their time and make sure that you're not taking someone who needs their mind to be completely focused in this one project in order to make it great and hit the deadlines. You don't wanna take them out of that and a rhythm that they got going on and, and put them towards another project like writing a commercial. You don't wanna do that. Because if this writer's in the fucking zone, if they're finally having momentum in their script, you can't crush that shit. You gotta let them go. And so, Sometimes you'll, you'll have to tell marketing team, oh no, I can't give you this writer, you know, you really want them because I need them to focus on this thing at least for the next week. You know, they're finally breaking through the, uh, the end of the outline. Or maybe they're writing the finale episode and just, you gotta leave them alone. So I'll give you these writers over here who are not as actively engaged and we'll give you them for this commercial. That might be the case. Or maybe they're all engaged. Maybe you as a head writer might end up having to fucking be the one who brainstorms the commercial and writes it. All the things you have to be prepared for. Um, so all of the things together make this a very challenging job, but knowing that all of the, the work that this company is producing, is writing and then producing and hitting the screen, knowing that those are all your babies, those are your children, and you are helping grow all of these fucking beautiful children. 
you're developing them from nothing, right? Everything at Vet TV, we go from concept, idea, to distribution. And the idea phase starts together. Oh, oh guess who's leading the idea phase? You. And in the idea phase, oh, this is the other big fucking thing. You have to know what stories to tell, right? You might get pitched a lot of stuff that seems great, but which of that stuff actually gets produced by the company that gets up almost $200,000 put towards it? Fucking dozens of people put behind it to make this thing happen, to bring it to the screen. Uh, you have to choose what stories to tell. Now me, um, I'll have a vote in there for sure, but it, it is the job of the head writer to train everyone to pitch better so that they're pitching you stories that you know are gonna hit with this audience, that you know fulfill the mission statement and the vision statement of the company to recreate parody and celebrate the military experience for those who've served. Recreate. That means this shit's got to be authentic. That means you can't just write. You have to write with advisors who lived in that world guiding you, telling you, oh yeah, that's how it would go. It would go like that. And that's how writers need to write. And that's the recreation of the military experience. The military is all encompassing too. It includes veteran experience. So, where was I? Recreate parody. Par what does parody mean? That means that we acknowledge the absurdity that exists in the United States military and we parody it, accentuate it, exaggerate it to make it so absurd you cannot fucking help but laugh. And some of that is people dying. Yeah, we make comedy of that shit all the fucking time. Death, death like being killed or maimed in combat death by suicide, motorcycle accident. It's all comedy. Why? Because it's tragedy. If it's tragic, we can make comedy out of it. So PTSD, night terrors, um, drug use, abuse, domestic abuse, sexual assault, all of the horrible fucking things that we experience in the military um, are reworked, reframed, and then presented as comedy, as something that has the intention of making the audience laugh. It's a risky fucking thing with the topics we choose. So you gotta be careful. You must be uh, ready at any moment to explain your decisions, to explain why you said yes to that project and not to this project. Um, you, you must explain why you think it's okay to make this joke here, but it's not okay to make this joke here because you're gonna get challenged and you better be ready to fucking to give answers. Explaining every thought that goes through your head that, that has to become second nature to you. And then you have, so have to be willing to acknowledge, yeah, never mind. Uh, maybe I wasn't right about that. That happens, that's gonna happen all the fucking time. And if it doesn't happen, uh, you might not be the person for the job because you can't come into it with the belief that you're always right and that you're God. You'll, you can come in hard with certain beliefs and principles and practices, but you have to be willing to listen to a group of people and at some point be like, uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, never mind. Uh, you guys have sold me on that. Yeah, I, uh, I stand corrected, guys. I stand corrected. Thanks for, for helping me see it from a new perspective. We're doing that. You have to be willing to do that too. Because um, the people that write for this company, write, act, direct, or create, they're too talented to ever, to not challenge you, right? <laughs> and we have a very o open culture of, of, um, of, of critiquing and asking questions and challenging. And it's all done with respect and candor and it makes it really fucking cool. Right? Everything that we present gets workshopped by everyone else. And we just, we diagnose it. What are the problems with this? What parts of this script are not working for me? 
and we I would talk through those things. I, I loved this, loved this, this right here, this wasn't working for me, this played too slow, or I started to lose focus here, I started to daydream, which means that something in here isn't being written well. Look, actually, this line right here, look at that right there. That kind of lost me, because it contradicted something that happened earlier, and then I got confused, and then I just fell out of the story there. So, did anyone else feel that? And a couple of people were like, yeah, actually, I was, I, I kind of got a little confused at that moment too. And someone else, yeah, me too. I was like, okay, cool. So we acknowledge that there's a problem. We've diagnosed a problem here. Now, how do we fix it? What's the solution? And then people start throwing out solutions. Well, what you could do is you could have the character say that just in the scene prior, and then he doesn't even need to acknowledge it here. Or maybe this joke just needs to be set up a little bit better. Just add a little bit of reference to that here, and then maybe in the scene prior, and then maybe one more time for the rule of threes. And then by the time it gets to that fucking moment there, Bam, it's a hard punch. You know the audience is laughing out loud. Right? And so these are the things that, the ways in which we diagnose problems and then provide solutions to the problems. Treatments. And that's how we workshop all of our scripts. So that's an important thing. It's an important part of the business, important part of your job as a head writer. And uh, that's about all I got. Head writer for veteran television. You're guiding the voice of the company. Ooh, look at that. Look at that shit. So this is, this is an example. Loving the community. I'm on fucking uh, Amazon, and I was looking for carpets. And I typed military carpets. And I came across this thing. Look at that shit. 75th Ranger Regiment. The badass fucking logo. I have friends who served in that unit. One of them is Matt Best. You should know that name. He will lead a franchise one day. I'm hoping he leads a grunt's life, the show, but the Army Ranger version of a grunt's life. And he's the star of that. Imagine what that franchise would do. It, that would be insane. Matt, if you're watching, we're going to start writing the treatment to present to you uh, after a grunt's life is written. Here it comes, baby. Here it comes. So look, I'm just seeing this thing, and I'm just like... That's so fucking cool. I've known a handful of people in the 75th, and that's just such a cool logo. I'm like, I want that in my house. That looks so, uh, why not have that carpet instead of something else? This fucking shag. Brown, ugly ass shag. That's way fucking cooler. Think of the military history that exists in this unit. How many of the baddest motherfuckers on the planet have come through this unit? And kicked down fucking doors and snuck through jungles and blasted our enemies in the face. How many in that unit? Fox G5, my unit. Same thing. There's amazing, colorful history there. You have to love this stuff. The military experience has to be the coolest fucking thing ever. Look at my fucking place. Look at look at those things on the walls. There's my rings. Look at that shit. PJs, badass. Look over there. We got 82nd PJs, uh, 101st, 173rd. Why? Because I just fucking love those units. Because I think Airborne is sick as fuck. I think Airborne is ba more badass than Marine. In some ways. Some units. I just fascinated. I just like looking at it. You as a head writer should too. Because that love and passion for the, the, these units, their history, the people who have served in there, the battles they fought in, the jokes that they made in the field and training. You are in charge of, of pulling all of those true experiences and bringing them to the screen. You gotta love it all. If you wanna be great at it, you gotta love it. So I think that's about good. We'll include a more, um, I guess, detailed uh, job description for um, for you all. Uh, it'll probably be in the description of this here. Might be on LinkedIn too. Just reach out to us. Um, info at VeteranTV.com. Submit at VeteranTV.com. Those are the only emails that I can think of. But uh, if you're interested in being the head writer for Veteran Television, a company that it is a fucking television network, guys. Okay? And let me tell you something right now. Just because we are not in Hollywood, we're not a part of Hollywood, uh, 
it means nothing. We are creating. That's all that should matter to a fucking writer. If your interest is to please the people who vote for the Oscars, uh, probably not the place for you. Your interest should be to please this community with great filmmaking, great storytelling, and great comedy. That's, that's, that's your interest here. Fuck all of the shit that goes on in that fucking goddamn incestuous, disgusting fucking place. It's, it's honestly, I, that, that place, I don't get it. So much, so much has been created in there that has made filmmaking unhealthy in many ways. Now granted, I say this and I'm friends with fucking hundreds of actors who are the most amazing, beautiful people in the world. But the Hollywood system, I think, is dying. And the new system is gonna get recreated in small niches all across the world. All that matters to a creator is that you are creating something that is of value to others that can connect us through storytelling. That we are recreating the human experience. And as long as we get to do that, especially for a community of people who are gonna appreciate it, that should be all that matters. If you're looking for awards, we'll create the fucking awards. <laughs> That's the beauty of this shit. We've, st we've got a, a fucking television business. And guess what? We're gonna create a film division, feature films soon. Now we're gonna have scripted television shows, fucking 15 shows per year getting made. And then we're gonna have maybe two to three shows or two to three movies made per year as well. Some of it will distribute, others will have license to other distributors. Right? This has been done before. What we're trying to do, Tyler Perry has done something similar. Jason Blum has done something similar. If it's been done before, then we know it can be done again. And guess what? We're already fucking doing it. Over 80,000 subscribers. Paid subscribers. Built from nothing. The, the possibilities in this business are endless. Because we've, we've built this entire business. Get this, get this. And we started out with one screenwriter. The screenwriter that we started with uh, had written a couple YouTube videos prior to, to coming into this company. And that was me. Now we have seven full-time screenwriters who are all better than me. They all put better words to the fucking page. And, and we built a business off of insanely talented people with little experience. Now those same talented people have just over three years of experience and growing. Every day we get better at what we do because that's one of our core values. Get better every fucking day. We live, we live our business has been built with, with these values that are, um, that, that has enabled us to continue growing and developing. Begin with the audience in mind. The audience is God, the audience is everything. Without them, we are nothing. We have nothing. So everything begins with them. Next is we strive to be better every single day as a writer, as a filmmaker, as a person, as an American, as a veteran. Um, elite communication, which I might change to great communication. Communication is the core of what we do. So every time we communicate, we should be proud of communicating well. We should shame poor communication. People who, who just speak ignorantly and shortly. Um, we can do that joking. Okay, we do it all the time. Uh, just, I mean, watch me high, I sound like an idiot. But we should be proud of our communication when we are trying to be on point. Because communication is the core of everything that we do. So elite communication, we build community. Building community is um, I, I guess it's still part of the core of what we do. I have a lot of things at the core of what we do. But all of the things that we're trying to do, right? Our vision statement, bringing the community together with laughter, building community, connecting people together with storytelling and laughter. That's what we do. And by bringing them together, we're able to, uh, we are able to create a sense of acceptance and combat social isolation. And once we can do that with less social isolation is less suicide. So I know it sounds crazy that, oh, it's a TV network that makes dark irreverent comedy is combating suicide, but it's fucking possible. And we do it every fucking day and just read the testimonials. 
It all starts with hard laughter that they can't get anywhere else. It's, it's some, for some people, it's really hard to make them laugh. People who are in a real funk, really depressed, right? The, the brain is not producing dopamine. We can provide that dopamine for them through our comedy. That's part of the, the, the joy of what we do is accepting that challenge and then succeeding, knowing that we've made people laugh who haven't laughed like that in years. It brings dopamine to the brain that leads to a whole bunch of positive changes in their life because that dopamine is the fuck, it's the key to everything. We'll talk about dopamine more. So building community is one of our core values. So what do we have? We have uh, better every day, elite communication, um, the uh, audience is everything, and we build community. And what was the fifth? Oh no, what a bummer. <laughs> elite communication, better every day. We build community. Oh, collaboration is key. Collaboration. Everything that we do is collaborative. Um, writing in isolation, trying to shot list in isolation, creating in general in isolation, it doesn't work long. And uh, we, all, we all need to write in isolation for short periods of time, but then we have to come back and collaborate as a group. The more that we collaborate, with these people that we have immense respect for, the more we collaborate, the better the product gets. And so that's why collaboration is built into all of our processes for all of the things, business decisions, marketing decisions, operations decisions, and of course, writing decisions. It's all collaborative. And then once we get on the film set, those of you who've been on set, you know, every moment of that day, every interaction is in collaboration with, at the bare minimum, one other person. Um, but collaboration is the key to this. It is, this is a collaborative art form. It's not like novel writing where you, know, you just spit out your book. Um, and even I think there are some screenwrites or screenwriters who can write a screenplay themselves. Now they're gonna have editors check it over and stuff, but we as a business, we're doing it all in house. So the writing is collaborative and the writing, the writing team is talking to the production team and talking to the marketing team, who's talking to the operations team. And everybody talks, and together we're able to produce shows constantly. We never stop. Production never fucking stops, guys. This business is nuts. And it's all these insanely fucking talented people that are collaborating together, that are striving to be better every day, that are always going to the audience to learn from the audience what they want to see, what they find funny, what they find painful. How do they want to be entertained? We're all go always going to them. Striving to be better and then the end result of all the things, of, after communicating well, communicating well through all of the collaborative process, the end result is that we build community. And that, could build, that building of community uh, reduces isolation and reduces suicide. That's the beauty of this business. We're making dark comedy, but at the same time, we're doing an amazing thing for our community and for people. For American fucking citizens. And that's such a special fucking thing. And, um, and whoever is the head writer must appreciate that about this business, about what we do. So, so there we go. That was a whole bunch. And uh, I look forward to, to meeting anyone that has an interest in this position because it's such a special thing. To my heart, to our company and to our community. So there we go. Um, I'll put more description in here in the comments about uh, what to, um, how to get hold of us. And hopefully we'll talk soon. Peace and love, y'all. Remember, we're all about war when we're in, but when we get out, we gotta move on a little bit. It's another thing the head writer's gotta do. Encourage growth in our community. Okay, I'm going to stop before I start life coaching. Nobody wants that shit. Uh, see you soon.